Coming up, we check in on New Zealand one week after a man opened fire at two mosques, killing dozens of people. And former President Carter is celebrating a major milestone this morning. We'll tell you what's going on. And garbage rates are going up in one eastern Kentucky county. We will tell you what the money's going towards. Let's get into our forecast. No March Madness here this morning, but some fog across parts of the area. We're seeing that over at UVA Wise and saw a little bit last night up on top of Whitesburg Pine Mountain. So just be careful. Patchy fog this morning in spots. Satellite radar loop over the last six hours. Rain now pulling off to the west and to, or excuse me, to the east from the west. And those clouds starting to diminish there from the west toward the east as well. Temperatures upper 30s and low 40s, except for Wise hanging out there at 34 this morning across the state. More of the same. 36 in Paducah to 42 up toward Charleston and Huntington. Planner for today, we'll see those clouds slowly diminish. Maybe some sunshine later in the day toward 5, 6 o'clock, and then we'll see a slow clearing in the overnight hours. Rest of the forecast on the way here in just a few minutes. Connor? All right, thanks, Brandon. Well, today marks one week since a shooting rampage that killed 50 people in New Zealand. Later this morning, more than two dozen of those victims will be buried. John Lawrence reports. New Zealand remembering those killed one week ago. When, when any part of the body suffers, the whole body feels pain. New Zealand mourns with you. We are one. Authorities say all 50 victims have been identified and their bodies are being returned to their families. I believe that my, my son and my husband are in heaven now. Two minutes of silence in Christchurch Friday afternoon local time. Right before that, the Muslim call to prayer was broadcast across the country. We need to, to show the, the whole world that what's happened can't stop us from practicing our worship. Authorities say the two mosques targeted by the gunmen will be returned to the community this weekend. We have shown that New Zealand is unbreakable and that the world can see in us an example of love and unity. New Zealand is already in the process of changing its gun laws. The push includes banning military-style semi-automatic weapons and assault rifles. Officials are also working on a buyback scheme for those arms. I'm John Lawrence reporting. The 28-year-old shooting suspect is scheduled to return to court on April 5th. And police in southern Kentucky say the death of a pregnant woman is now being investigated as murder. Jerry Johnson was shot Sunday outside a home near Corbin in Whitley County. She died after delivering a baby. That baby died four days later. Police say her boyfriend, Daniel Nance, who was already in jail on other charges, is being charged in Johnson's death. We will be seeking uh, fetal homicide charges as well as murder charges against him. We don't know what the Whitley County Grand Jury will ultimately decide, but that's what we will be seeking. There will be a joint funeral service for Jerry and her baby Amelia Johnson at 3 p.m. Friday at the Crawley Funeral Home in Williamsburg. The Whitley Circuit Court clerk says the next grand jury will meet on April 1st. An Arizona medical worker is in police custody on sexual assault charge. Xavier Perez was a medical transporter at Integrated Pain Consultants in Scottsdale. Police say in June of 2018, he was taking a female sedated patient to a recovery facility when she woke up the 20, the 38 year old Perez was allegedly assaulting her. According to authorities, the 48 year old woman called 911 once she regained, once she regained full consciousness. Sometimes when you're coming out of sedation, obviously you're foggy. So um, trying to put that together, but she just knew something wasn't right. Officers said DNA evidence linked Perez to the crime. He admitted to the sexual assault, claiming it was a one-time thing. While there is no evidence that there are more crimes, police still urge people with information to come forward. A Missouri company that owned a duck boat that capsized last year and killed 17 people is hoping to get a fresh start with a new attraction. The ride, the Ducks attraction, will be replaced with what Ripley's Attractions is calling Branson's Top Ops. It will feature an interactive outdoor maze, indoor laser tag, and other adventures. Officials say they plan to donate 10% of the 2019 season proceeds to first respond responders. Branson's mayor thinks the move is a step in the right direction. Part of the healing process is moving forward. You never forget what happened, but you also keep moving forward toward the future. 
Branson Top Ops is currently scheduled to open to Memorial Day weekend. And President Trump signed an executive order on Thursday tying federal grant money to the issue of free speech on college campuses. The president was joined at the White House by students who said they experienced backlash while expressing conservative views. The move comes amid criticism, highlighting instances of alleged violence and suppression of conservative voices on college campuses. Universities that want taxpayer dollars should promote free speech, not silence free speech. White House officials didn't provide details about how the order will be implemented or enforced, leaving it unclear what effect it could actually have on college campuses. And the blame game over the condition of West Virginia's roads just got a bit more testy. Governor Jim Justice told Metro News earlier this week there will be an avalanche of road work soon on secondary roads. He also criticized U.S. Senator Joe Manchin for letting the roads fall into despair when he was governor. Manchin was in Charleston yesterday and fired back. I mean, the bottom line, I'm not blaming anybody, never have. I just did my job. I say, governor should do his job. You can't just sit there for two years and do nothing and then start blaming everybody for what's wrong. you got to fix it. And so the governor putting blame, he ought to look at himself in the mirror. In other political news, Jimmy Carter has a, the new title of president, a new title as of Thursday. He's the oldest living former U.S. president in history as of this morning, Carter is 94 years old, 94 years and 173 days to be exact, actually. Older than former President George H.W. Bush when he died last November, Carter was, 39, was the 39th president, Georgia's 76th governor, and a Navy veteran. Along with his newest feat, he was also the first U.S. president to be born in a hospital. In economic news, officials say coal mining jobs in Virginia increased last year for the first time in five years. Despite the coal increase, coal production was down slightly between 2017 and 2018. We're told coal companies also employed far fewer people last year compared to just a few years ago. And nobody won Wednesday night's Powerball jackpot, but someone here in Kentucky could be a million dollars richer. Kentucky lottery officials say one of the tickets sold in Radcliffe matched all five white balls, but not the Powerball, and won the game's second prize of $1 million. Since nobody's picked all six numbers, the jackpot for Saturday's drawing now goes up to $625 million. An increase in Pike County garbage pickup rates goes into effect on April 1st. Officials say there are several reasons for carrying out the new rate structure. Only four years are left to expand Phase 5 of the landfill to Phase 6, which will cost $3 million. Officials say had money been set aside in years past for equipment replacement, rates would not be going up. Workers say customers are also not paying their bills, which adds to the financial struggle. You know, if everybody will do their part, because everybody gets the service, you know. Um, so it's not fair for those that pay the bill and get the service for those that don't pay the bill. To learn more on what it costs to purchase new equipment and future garbage pickup rates, you can head on over to our website, WYMT.com. And for the last week, we've been telling you about a break-in at Letcher County's Little League. Two people are behind bars charged with the theft. All the items were returned, but as I found out, not all of them can be used again. It's been a roller coaster of a week <laughs> for Michael Sexton. Yes. Last week, the Little League he manages... Anything they could pick up and pack off, they pretty much got it. ...was broken into. Two people were charged with taking, well, basically everything. I was like, no, no, we're, <laughs> we've been robbed. Thousands of dollars worth of equipment. Luckily, it's back now, but the supplies used to cook... Our crock pots, our... Our, uh, we had a couple George Foreman grills, all of our utensils. They were hidden in a nasty area. It was one of the, bad, the worst places I've ever been in. They can't really use them anymore, and the concession stand is basically the only income. Only thing we get is concession and what donations that, you know, the public may give us. And practice is fast approaching. April 13th, so it's just right around the corner. And now they're hoping for any help they can get. It, it ain't for me, and it ain't for, the, it's for these kids. To make sure the league can continue. So uh, we're, we're glad to have any support we can get. Providing a place for the kids. League officials say they have received several donations for pe from people and businesses throughout the community. We have contact information for the league on our website, wymt.com. 
Well, coming up on Mountain News this morning, the Plugged In crew gives their you their take on the new movie Wonder Park. And the forecast features some nice, much nicer conditions this weekend. I'll tell you about them in about three minutes. For years, our law firm has been promoting adoptions at the Floyd County Animal Shelter. When you adopt a four-legged friend, you not only enrich the life of the pet, but bring great joy to the adopting family. Come visit the Floyd County Animal Shelter located behind the Mountain Arts Center and bring your new best friend home today. Katrina Salisbury is holding Lacey, a two-month-old female hound mix. Pet of the Week is sponsored by Pillarsdorf, DeRosset, and Lane Law Office.